It's a crisis decades in the making. Europe on the brink of an energy and economic disaster as supplies are choked off and electricity costs soar. With winter swiftly approaching, things could easily go from bad to worse. The European economy is going to collapse if electricity, if natural gas keeps doing what it's doing. There's no mystery to that. You're talking about input costs that are starting to hit levels that are overshadowing the profit margins. They're just going to shut down industry. We're seeing it in a compressed time scale, but energy is this master resource. Extraordinary geopolitical circumstances and conflict are colliding with years of short-sighted energy policies that left countries like Germany and the UK heavily dependent on Russian imports to meet their energy needs. Russia has been restricting supplies of the cheap natural gas that Europe depended on for years to generate electricity and power homes and factories. I'm already at the limit. I don't know yet how to get through the next two weeks, she said. I see everything rising, the rent, power. I don't know how things will develop. According to Eurostat, Russian supply accounts for 29% of Europe's oil imports, 43% of its natural gas, and 54% of its coal. Western sanctions against Putin appear to be backfiring. Meanwhile, the benchmark price of electricity on the continent is breaking records, up almost 300% since the start of 2022. And with Russia's recent shutdown of the crucial Nord Stream 1 pipeline, which supplies natural gas to Europe through Germany, the crisis is putting a spotlight on whether Europe's green initiatives have now crippled the continent's ability to power itself. All those net zero promises by 2050 seem rather irrelevant at the moment. We are in what can be described as a hybrid war, said French President Emmanuel Macron. Russia uses energy resources, like it does food, as a war weapon to exert pressure. Among the policies in recent years that left Europe strangled from abundant energy is the phasing out of nuclear power plants. Outgoing British Prime Minister Boris Johnson railed against this strategy, saying it caused countries to be dependent on foreign suppliers. How many new nuclear power stations have we built in the 27 years since? The answer is none. It's called myopia. It's called short-termism. It's a chronic case of politicians not being able to see beyond the political cycle. In other words, a classic case of high time preference behavior, whereas a feature of the Bitcoin system is low time preference thinking. And now with the war in Ukraine extending into a new month, there is no easy political solution. After all, you can print money, but you can't print energy. He knows that the power of the West is based on a paper credit system. He's saying, bullshit, I, you know, okay, I call. You want the oil? Or you want the wheat? You want the natural gas, Germany? Show me, show me the real stuff. Macro analysts, including Luke Groman and author Alex Epstein, make the case that energy as a master resource is the most important driver of industry and quality of life on planet Earth. And ultimately, it is energy, not money, which determines the course of global politics. Energy is so fundamental to the productivity of our economy, and therefore what I would call our ability to flourish as individuals, to really live long, healthy, safe, uh, fulfilling lives. The real politic of energy, the threat of people starving and freezing in Europe and Japan will force geopolitical realignments that are completely inconceivable to 99% of people. The energy price problems ballooning across Europe could soon manifest here in the US, where policymakers in the name of emission reduction at all costs are also moving away from reliable, abundant, and low-cost fossil fuels and nuclear in favor of solar and wind and battery, much of which are not only intermittent sources of energy and built using fossil fuels, but at immense cost to energy production. And while states like California push initiatives to move 100% to electric vehicles by 2035, officials there are also asking the public not to charge their EVs during heat waves because of their massive strain on the state's power grid, a potential foreshadowing of future issues with supply and demand. We need better infrastructure to support the huge switch to EVs. We're not there yet. The grid can't support it. Fiat money, false narratives, and financial derivatives have essentially contributed to this. Oil prices have doubled, coal prices have quadrupled, and natural gas is now seven times more expensive than early last year. And then you have Bitcoin as a measure of energy made possible by the proof-of-work mechanism, becoming pure price signal. I think Bitcoin is just doing what gold would do if it didn't have the gigantic unallocated paper gold market attached to it. It's telling the truth about dollar liquidity, about, you know, about money printer go burr. 
But here's a more tangible way Bitcoin is fitting into the energy narrative as a potential solution. With oil and gas companies striving to meet new emissions guidelines and checks amid rising costs, Bitcoin mining is becoming one of the easiest and most profitable ways to capture stranded energy that would have otherwise been released into the environment. You can capture the natural gas, put it in a generator. That electricity can power a Bitcoin rig that is mining Bitcoin. Instead of economic waste, it makes it an economic profit. American Bitcoin miners like Adam Ortoff of Upstream Data are doing just that and leaning into the indisputable reliability and energy density of fossil fuels. None of us ever anticipated something like Bitcoin, so the world has to change, right? We have to figure out how to deal with oil and gas now that we have this new technology that can rescue all stranded energy. And that's exactly why miners like Adam are in the trenches harnessing stranded energy and converting it into the hardest asset humanity has ever known and competing to drive prices of energy down while benefiting from Bitcoin's price over the long run going up. We should celebrate all forms of, of energy production and power generation. I think it's foolish to moralize some and demonize others. We should recognize humanity flourishes when we have abundant and economic energy. And so the more efficient and more production overall that we can encourage and we can incentivize, the better off we're gonna be. Energy is not a bad thing. It's, it's the best thing. We hope you enjoyed that report. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Swan Bitcoin YouTube page so that you don't miss out on any hard money content.